Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So from this video onwards, I will start a series of videos on Python data structures. Starting with list, I will go on to sets, Python dictionaries, and then tuple. So let's get started with Python lists. So what is list? In Python, a list is a ordered collection of heterogeneous elements. Okay, and these are mutable. Now we'll see how we can define the list and how we can access the elements in it and modify the list and we'll also get to know what mutable means by okay so let me open up a jupyter notebook here so this i have opened up here i will open up a new jupyter notebook i will rename it to python lists so now there are two ways to define a list or declare a list in fact so let's say I want to create a list by name my list. So I can either do this or I can do this. So either I can declare a list using a pair of square brackets or I can use a method by name list to create my list. So this will create an empty list. So if you check the type of the variable my list, it will be list okay because list is a data structure in python and this will be used to create a list okay now let me create a list with some elements in it okay so let's say one two three okay so this is called as list now let's say i want to create list of list Okay, so we can do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? You can have any elements on it. So this is called as list of lists. So here I am getting an error. Why? Because it says there is a syntax error. Right? I forgot to give a comma here. Okay. So now if I execute it, it will be fine. So why it is called as list of lists? Because I have a list and the elements of the list are lists itself. So this inside this first element, which is one list, this is another list, right? So this bigger list contains two lists. That's why we call it as list of lists. But still, if you check the type of list of lists, it will still say it's a Python list. So hope you guys understood it. So, the def according to definition of the list, list is a order collection of heterogeneous elements. So, what do we mean by this? When I say heterogeneous elements, my list can contain different types of data. Let's say I have 1, 2, 3. These are simple integers. I can have list within this as well. Let's say 1, 2, 4. Okay. Also, I can have a string as part of my list. Also, I can have my complex number as part of this list. Okay, 6, 8. So, if I now check the type of this variable my list, it will still say it is a list. Okay, so this is a heterogeneous collection of elements. Now, what do we mean by ordered collection? So, as you can see here, the first element is 1, the second element is 2, third element is 3. The fourth element is a list itself and the content of that list is 1, 2 and 4. The fifth element is it's a string, anchor, and the sixth element is a complex number, 3 plus 6. So, if we want to access any of the elements in the later part of our program, we can access, this, access them using indexing. So, let's say if I want to access the first element of this list, Let's say I want to just print this one here or let's say I want to print Shankar for, for a set. So Shankar is at which position? It's at 0, 1, 2, 3 and then 4. So if I say my list of 4, it will return me Shankar. Okay, Shankar is a string. So now let's say if I want to access this list inside this my list, I want to access this list, another list. Okay. So, how I can do that? My 
list of so you just have to check the index or positional index of this particular element so it is 0 1 2 3 right so if i just say my list of 3 it will return me that particular element within the list my list so this is the element at position index 3 so this is how we can access the elements within the list there is another way let's say i want to access first three elements of the list okay so how i can do that i just say my list of start from 0 and at 4 so it will print 0 1 2 and third element so if i just want to print 1 2 3 i'll have to say 0 to 3 why because 3 is exclusive 0 is inclusive if i execute it i'll say i'll see first three elements within this list okay please don't get confused this is not this particular list as you can see the elements are different it's 1 2 4 here the first three elements are 1 2 3 hope this is clear okay so now let's say if i want to have every alternate elements of the list when i say alternate elements i want the first element i do not want second i want third i do not want this fourth i want this fifth but i do not want this so how i can do that so i'll start from zero i want to go through all the elements within the list so i can just leave that blank and there is a another argument called a step argument what do you mean by step if i say nothing it will just step by one one element so after one it will print two three like this so if i say two here okay, sorry not there here if i say two at the step position it will give me what one it skipped two it gave me three it skipped this element it gave me shankar and it finally skipped this okay so likewise we can skip how many elements we want as per our requirements okay so this is how we can access individual elements or set of elements within the list okay now we will see the available methods within the list okay so let's say my list so how we can check the available methods for list data structure so my list is a variable i type that and then press dot and then i hit tab so it will give me all the available methods for that particular list so it says append clear copy okay if i just click on that it will just take it so let me not click that append clear copy count extend index insert pop remove reverse and sort okay so now we will go through one by one in the detailed way so what do you mean by append so this append method actually adds an element at the end of the list okay so if you want to check the definition of this you can just go inside this method and hit shift plus tab this will give you the definition of the function so what it says append object to the end of the list so let's say i want to have 100 at the end of this list okay so i'll just execute this cell now if i print it out i will have 100 appended the end of my list okay so this is what append does now we will see what this second method is so it says clear right so clear what clear mean it removes all the items from the list so if i execute it my whole list will be empty all the elements will be removed so i will execute this in the last section of this video let me go to the next method my list dot copy okay let's say i want to copy this list so why we have this copy method okay i will also explain that before going to copy i'll explain why we need copy so let's say i want to have another list variable pointing to this variable my list so or or let's say if i just create my new list is equal to my list so this doesn't create a copy okay it will just this my new list will point to the original my list so any change if i just print my new list it will be equal to the variable my list okay? now if i add 
any element to the original my list by using append method. Let's say I'm adding 66 to it. And I check my list variable, 66 will be there. Now, if I check my new list, my new list, the 66 will be reflecting in my new list as well. Because why? Because this my new list will be just pointing to the original list, my list. So, this is not how we create a copy of a list. So, in order to create a copy of the list, let's say my new list is equal to my list dot copy. If I execute this, okay, let's say my new list. So, we have these elements. In my list also, we have the same number of elements. But now, let's say if I add another element to my list using append function, let's say I introduced a new element 77. So, if I check my list now, it will be modified and a new element by value 77 will be added to that list. Now, if I check my, my new list variable, that new element added to the my, my list variable will not be reflecting in my new list because we just created the copy of my list and assigned a name my new list to that copy. So, whatever changes you do in my list will not be reflecting in my new list. Okay, so this is why we need copy. All right. Now, let's see the next method. So, we saw append, we saw copy. Let's see what count does. So, count it just returns the number of occurrences of the value. Okay. So, you can see the elements of the variable my list. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4 is a list. Anchor, this is a complex number 166, 77. So, what I'll do, I'll just add another element to this using my append method. Then let's say I'll just add 2 to it. Okay, just to demonstrate the count method. So, sorry, it's not a method, right? My list is a variable. So, you can see 2 is repeating 2 times, right? So, if now I want to execute the count method, dot count and I want to count the number of times element 2 occurs in the list. So, if I just pass the element that I want the count of and execute this, it will say 2. Okay. Likewise, if I say my list dot count of Shankar, right? So, it will give me 1 because Shankar is occurring one time. So, there is a scope for confusion here. When I say count of 2, it did not count this particular element here. It only counted this one and this one. Why did it skip this particular two? Because this two is within a list. Okay. And this list is an element at index three of this bigger list. Correct. That's why it will count the occurrence of elements by matching the value that we pass to the count method all right so we passed it to it will only match the two with elements not with the elements within the list if at all that particular list contains another list okay so that's why it returned two so what are those two counts this is one occurrence and this is another occurrence all right so this is how the count works now let's check the next available method it says I will uh, deal with index uh, extend data. I will come to index now. So index. So what this does? It returns the first index of the value. Okay. So it says it returns the first index of the value. So let's say I have two at this particular position and at this particular position, right? So let's say I want to return the index of element two. It will return me one because this is 0th index, this is at first index, right? Third, 0th index, first index, second index, third index, fourth index, fifth index, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth index, right? So we total have nine indexes, but the number of elements in this list is 10. So how we can check the number of elements in the list? Just execute length 
my list will be 10. But the index starts from 0, that's why the last index will be 9. 0 to 9 will give us 10 elements, right? So this is what index does. Now let's go ahead and check the next available method my list dot insert. So what insert does? You see, it says insert the object before the index. So we need to specify at what index we need to insert the object. Object can be any value. Okay. So let's say I want to insert paint say after Shankar. Okay. Okay, that's my last name. Paint say is my last name. So I want to insert paint say after Shankar, but before this complex number, right? So how I can do that? For that, I want to know the position or index of this particular element. Okay. That is 3 plus 60. So how I can check the index of this element? If the list is pretty small, I can directly count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Or else, if I want to check the index, I can just use index and then I can pass 3 plus 6j. Right? If I say 3 plus 6j, it will return me 5. Okay. Now I will say insert. What's the syntax? I need to specify the index and then the value that I want to insert. So I want to insert at fifth index, I want to insert the value and say. Okay. Now if I check my list, you see after Shankar it has inserted paint say, but the paint say value is before 3 plus 6 j. Okay. So 3 plus 6 j was at index 5. Now it is shifted by one position to the right. So 3 plus 6 j now is at index 6. The index 5 will have the value of paint say. Okay. So this is what insert does. Now let's say the let's see the next available method my list dot pop. Okay, what pop does? So it removes the element from the list and then it returns. Okay, so when when it says it returns, we can either store it in a variable pop value is equal to my list dot pop. So there are two things here. If I do not specify anything within the pop method, it will just flip the last element. Okay, so let's check that. So if I just say pop value printed see it will have this element removed from this list so how you can check that if i just display my list now that two is gone right with the help of pop but there is another thing that we can do in pop my list dot pop you say index so remove and return the item at index right so by default it removes an item at the last index but let's say i want to remove the remove this particular list here okay i do not want this list so it's at what index again if i want to check the index if the list is small i can count it directly it's 0 1 2 and 3 okay but if i want to check the index my list dot index of 1 2 4 so it returns me 3 so let's say i want to remove this i'll just pass 3 to pop and now i will pop value is equal to and execute this now if i see my pop to value variable it will have that list one two four which is an element at third index of this my list variable now if i execute this my list this particular element at index three that is one two four list is removed okay so this is what the pop method does now let's check with other method my list dot remove so what remove does remove means it removes the first occurrence of the value so we have to specify what value to remove pop means we have to specify the index if we do not specify the index by default it removes the element in the end but with remove method we have to specify the value actual value not the index of position okay so let's say i want to remove this complex number here so I'll just say remove this value from the list. Okay. Does it return anything? It doesn't return anything. Just remove it and the method will be applied on the original list. Okay. 
so if i just execute it and then now if i check my my list variable there you go the element the complex number is gone now because i asked to remove it with the remove method so this is what remove does let's say i'm creating a new list my new list is equal to i'm creating some random list okay 1 2 3 4 6 8 5 and then 7 okay so this is my list now list of numbers now if i want to check the next next available method which is reverse so let me just execute reverse on this my new list what it does it is again a in place method okay my new list will be reversed when i say in place method the whatever the action this method does it will be applied directly onto the original variable it will not create any copy or it will not return any new list okay so that's what we call as in place so what did this reverse do this reverse method just reverse the elements of the list so at first position it was one earlier now at first position we have seven because we just reversed it okay now we'll see something called as sort my new list dot sort okay so this is our my new list variable the content of it now if i just execute sort and then i check my new list you will see the elements in elements are sorted in ascending order right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so they are sorted in ascending order so what if i want to have this in descending order so i just have to execute sort again there is a argument called as reverse reverse is equal to true by default it will be false so it sorts the numbers or elements in ascending order if i pass reverse as true it will sort the elements of the list in descending order descending order okay so i just executed it now let's see the content of my new list so you can see the elements are in descending order okay so this is how the sort works now i will explain you the two methods which i left for later right so what are those one is clear and another one is extend okay so let me first execute clear on my new list so if i execute clear all the elements will be removed and this list will be completely empty it will remove everything so if you just go to the definition of it it will say remove all items from the list so it will have nothing so this is what clear does that's the reason i kept it towards the end of this video now i have a list called my list and it has some elements in it right okay so let's see what my list or extend method does so if i just go here it says extend list by appending elements from the iterable i will tell you what iterable is okay so for now we'll just say extend the list by appending elements from the list again so let's treat this iterable as list again because list is also an iterable let's say i have another list let's say list 1 is equal to 55 66 77 okay so this is my new list so if i say my list dot extend list 1 and then check my list you see the values are assigned values are appended towards the end right so if you just go ahead go here and then check the definition extend the list by appending appending right append means towards the end so appending elements from the iterable so in our case iterable is list so this is a list it has some elements in it i am extending my original my list variable with this list so this extend method will append the variables of append the elements of this list into this list so after executing this method if i check my list variable you will see the elements of list 1 being appended to the variable my list the end so hope you guys understood this if you have got any questions just post it in comments i will get back to you with the answers 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Happy learning. Take care. Bye-bye.